Welcome back to our final day of meditating on the topic of joy. And for this day, I've chosen as our opening quote um, a contemporary author, uh, John Green, who writes, Without pain, how could we know joy? This is an old argument in the field of thinking about suffering and its stupidity and lack of sophistication could be plumbed for centuries. But suffice to say that the existence of broccoli does not in any way affect the taste of chocolate. The hymn that I've chosen for today is hymn 649, O Jesus. And it'll give us a sort of a way to wrap up our thinking about joy and before we move on to our final topic, which will be love. But for now, let's take a deep breath. Find the joyful peace that is in sitting quietly for a moment. And let's hear the words to our hymn. O oh, Jesus, joy of loving hearts, the font of life and our true light, we seek the peace your love imparts and stand rejoicing in your sight. When we taste in you our living bread and long to feast upon you still. We drink of you, the fountainhead, our thirsting souls to quench and fill. For you, our restless spirit yearns wherever our changing lot is cast. Glad when your presence we discern, blessed when our faith can hold you fast. O oh, Jesus, ever with us stay. Make all our moments calm and bright. Oh, chase the night of sin away. Shed over the world your holy light. The words to this hymn are attributed to St. Bernard of Clairvoy. And he was an example of the complexity of the lives of people who have been made saints by the church. He was best known for co-founding the Knights Templar, but he was also a big supporter of the Crusades, which isn't a surprise. Yet, in all the biographies that I have read about him, they always report him as being a true peacemaker. He's also the patron saint of bees and beekeeping and is a very prolific writer. One of his most famous not poetry writings, um, because this hymn is probably one of his better known, but one of the non-poetic writings, is a writing called On Loving God, in which St. Bernard contemplates why we should love and how we should love. To quote from that particular writing. The measure of our love to God is to love immeasurably. For since our love is toward God, who is infinite and immeasurable, how can we bound or limit the love we owe him? Besides, our love is not a gift but a debt. And since the, it is the Godhead who loves us, himself boundless, eternal, supreme love, of whose greatness there is no end, yea, and his wisdom is infinite, whose peace passeth all understanding. Since it is he who loves us, I say, can we think of repaying him grudgingly? Bernard's voice travels through the centuries to encourage us to find joy in the love that we return to God and the love that we show our neighbors. 
from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish. For joy that is a human being and has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. And your hearts will rejoice and no one will take that joy from you. And so, of course, I have a few questions for you to ponder as you go about the rest of your day. First of all, do you feel that we have to experience pain in, under, in order to understand the feeling of joy? Is it possible to find joy in the simple things? And is it possible to find joy in the challenging things? And finally, how does the image of a restless spirit come to mind for you? Are there times in your life where you feel that your spirit has been restless? And so thank you for joining me today as we wrap up our contemplation on the idea of joy. And I hope you come back again and join me tomorrow when we'll spend some time thinking about the fourth topic of the Advent season, which is love. And until then, take care and God bless.